Hey guys, uh, chapter 8 for the Forge Master Game Character Masterclass. So in previous chapters we've gone through and got all of our bits and pieces all up to scratch. Uh, added a few sort of guide details and things like that. It's going to provide a good base for us to continue working on. In this chapter I'm going to create a few of the accessories that I'd like to add on to this character. So these might class as small details but um, add character, well, to the character. So we're going to add a few tools and a few implements, and I'm going to show you how we can actually go through creating those. We might use uh, Max for a few of them, and uh, we'll get them imported into ZBrush and see what we can come up with. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, start adding some little tools and things to his pouch at the front on his apron. So I think we'll probably have like a pair of pliers or uh, you know some chisels and bits and pieces like that. So I've got a few reference images to go by, uh, just using the magnificent Google Images. You can find pretty much anything you want on there, so you're never going to be short of reference. So when it comes to blacksmithing tools, it looks like we're going to be looking at some pliers, um, you know, a few little steel bits and pieces, maybe halves and some chisel heads, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and make a few of those. First of all, we're actually going to start those off in something like Max, just to get a, a base base mesh down. And we'll bring that into ZBrush, and we'll continue from there. So I'm just going to get Max open. Here we go. So we're inside Max, and first thing I'm going to do is just going to enlarge my perspective viewport, and switch over to Shaded. And we're just going to start off just by dragging in a box, we're going to go through some uh, standard box modeling with you. So I want to get a pair of pliers first of all. So what we're going to do is just drag drag in a box, give it a bit of thickness, and I'm just going to drag that towards the center. If you want to put it in the center, just go down to the translation tools at the bottom of the screen, type in 000, and I'll center it on the central point of the grid. And from here we're going to go to the modify panel and we're going to convert this to an editable poly. So we're going to right click on where it says box and click editable poly. And from here you can press T on your keyboard and it'll switch to a top view in the shaded shaded screen. And we're going to go ahead and just work uh, symmetrically on this. So I'm going to move these points to the center. So I've select vertices over in the selection menu move them over but they're not quite set so I'm just going to go into this little translation box and type 0 on the x-axis so now they're completely in the center so from here uh, we're going to get the basis for our pliers and they're not going to have not going to be fully working pliers as they're really just going to be decoration and um, probably won't be used for anything else other than sort of looking like pliers so just selecting the vertices, just going to move this down and start figuring out how to do these pliers. So really what I want to do is start to get the basis of things in. Remember in Max the navigation is you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and hold down the middle mouse button, that will rotate your view. Just holding down the middle mouse button and moving the mouse will pan. And um, holding down Control and Alt and the middle mouse button Moving your mouse backwards and forwards will zoom you in and out. So I've selected the polygon selection mode. I'm going to select the face at the end. And I'm going to click on extrude, which is going to give us this value box pop up here. If you just click that little settings box next to the extrude function. And from here you'll be able to drag this slider up and down to sort of get an idea of uh, what kind of value you're going to be extruding by. Now this isn't going to be extremely important as we're just kind of going to get a a rough idea of what the pliers look like. So just moving that out to try and get a curve for the handle of the pliers. Just extruding again. And again, and again. And there we go. So it's going to be the handles for our pliers. Just going to add a bit more of a curve in there and possibly bring that out a bit more to just kind of give it a bit more shape. It's going to be extremely low resolution so don't worry about it for now. 
So let's just get a reference picture up for the pliers. Okay, let's have a look. I want a small pair of pliers, I think, in this one. So I'm going to sort of take this sort of design and just kind of customize it a little bit. Oops, let's just get back into Max. There we go. So if we just squeeze that end in here, and if we start taking the nose of the pliers, we're actually going to do an indent on this, um, we're actually going to do an inset rather. So if we click on the inset button, we can choose the amount of inset that we'd like, so something like that. We're going to grab the edge selection mode. Grab the edge at the bottom, move that up, and from here we're going to, actually we're just going to move that back down a little bit, that was a bit too much. So from here we're going to select the face, and we're just going to extrude it, probably just pull that back a bit more. Going to extrude it one more time, but just by a custom amount. You can press the extrude button, and then you'll be able to just click and drag on the face that you want. And I'm going to do the same on here. So I'm just going to move these vertices in using the move tool. If you want to get them lined up exactly, then you can turn on the 3D snapping mode. If you actually right click on the snapping options, we'll choose to get an option for vertex. If we click on that and close the panel and activate the, uh, the 3D snapping feature, we can then grab a couple of vertices, move them about, and we'll be able to toggle them uh, from a top viewport. Be able to move them down and it'll snap to our vertices. Now there is a bit of a bug which I've got to remember how to solve where just choosing this edge is actually going to move move it around all over the place even though I've selected the Y constraint on the gizmo. Um, so how do we fix that? We fix that by right clicking on the snaps toggle Going on to options and then enabling axis constraints. So now we should be able to move this just along this axis without moving it side to side. So if we want to snap this to uh, to line up with another vertex, being so we've selected vertex in the snap options, we can grab the Y constraint, drag it down, and just touch the vertex we want to line it up with, and it'll do it for us. And we can do the same on the X axis down here. So that's all good. So we're getting there. We're getting something which looks a bit more like a set of pliers. So to finish it off, uh, I'm actually just going to duplicate this tool. If you click on Editable Poly to remove any vertex or edge selections you may have, we'll turn off the snaps toggle, and then we'll hold down Shift on the keyboard, and then just move it over to the side. And then I'll ask if we want to duplicate it. We can go ahead and press OK to create a copy. And then I'm just going to grab the rotation mode and turn on the angle snap toggle. I'm just going to rotate this round 180 degrees. You can say it's 180 because you actually get the uh, the little readout just above the rotation dialog. And then we can move that up to be in line and just bring that over here. So now you can see that again, a set of pliers on the go. Probably the best thing to do actually is so that we don't have to um, worry about it at the moment is to do that a little bit later. I just want to make sure that it's coming together all right. So from here, uh, we're going to go back to our original object. So if just click on that. We're going to go to edge, uh, sorry, face selection mode. Select the face at the end and press extrude. And we're just going to pull that out. And now we're just going to create the tip for our pliers. 
So to do that, I'm just going to pull in these vertices on the corners, just to give us a bit of a, a curved edge. I'm going to do the same with these bits. It'll make sense in a moment. And then once again, just going to extrude from here. I'm going to go to my top view by pressing T on the keyboard. And I'm going to grab these verts, pull them out a bit, line these up. And grab the face again. So if you select the face selection mode, it will automatically select the last face that you used. We're going to extrude. And we're going to press this little plus button so that we can extrude it again and again. Then I'm going to press the tick option to close down the settings menu. And from here, we're just going to drag and select boxes around these vertices, move them into place, just to get a rough idea of where we want this shape to go. And then we can actually switch over to the move tool. You can, uh, sorry, the rotate tool. You can do that by pressing E on the keyboard or clicking the rotation mode at the top. I'm going to turn off the angle snaps as I want to do this by freehand. And we're just going to grab the constraint around the edge here to rotate it in this sort of direction. And we're going to do that with the front as well. Just going to move these in. Go to my top view. And just going to put these down to pretty much a point. Going to click on the editable poly modifier to deselect everything. Going to duplicate it again. And just selected the original duplication and press delete just to remove it. And now I'm going to shift and drag on here. Choose copy. Uh, in fact, I might even choose instance. So any changes that I make on the on the main mesh will actually happen on this one as well. I'm going to select rotate. Turn on the angle constraint, and I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees, and get that lined up on this side. Just so I can see the polygons, I'm going to click on shaded, and then also click on edged faces, so I can see the original polys of uh, of my other mesh. So there we go, you can see we're getting some pliers coming together there. Really we want the tips kind of close together. So I'm going to go back to the original mesh, just click on it. I'm going to choose the vertex selection mode. And then I'm going to bring these together. And notice that what I do on this mesh is also happening on the other one. It's because we've got it set to a um, uh, an instance. So it's going to directly do exactly what we wanted on the other side as well. So that's great, so we've got a pair of pliers, but obviously they're not going to grip too much looking like that. So what we really need to do is grab these verts here, and bring it down so that they're roughly in line. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that'll do nicely. Maybe it won't. I think we need to pull these out a little bit more so they don't intersect too much. Looks like we're going to get some intersection anyway. So I'm just going to hit undo. And I'm going to choose a point which is a bit further away. And just move these vertices down. So that they line up. And that's going to give us something fairly level and it doesn't intersect. So it looks like it could work. So finally, uh, the last thing to do on here is just to add a little bit of detail. Um, we're going to set up some creases inside ZBrush so that we don't end up with too many polys to deal with. The final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the creation tab, hit sphere, and then I'm just going to turn on auto grid. Auto grid will allow us to draw the sphere on top of our current mesh. So we're going to go ahead and draw that on there. I'm going to right click just to deselect it. Go to the Spheres Modify tab, and I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. 
and then I'm going to select the face mode and I'm going to select everything up until the halfway point. So if we go ahead and press um, select our other mesh and press Alt X on the keyboard we get a transparent view. What we want to do here is essentially create a bolt that's going to hold these two parts together. And to do that, simply just going to take the bottom section and we're just going to stretch it down just so it creates this bolt or this this idea that there's a bolt there anyway. It doesn't have to be perfect as we're not going to see it in great detail and we probably won't be doing any detail sculpting on it in the first anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But it looks like we might need to uh, stretch these vertexes over a little bit just to give it more of a surface to actually bolt together. So there we go. Let's turn, select our original mesh and press Alt X. And now we have a fairly reasonable looking pair of pliers for just a few minutes work. So we get a lot faster at that the more you practice. And we don't need to do anything much more than that really. We're just going to start combining these things together so it's all one, one mesh rather than different parts. So we can then go choose attach from the editable poly mode. We're going to attach it to the bolt. We're then going to go back to our selection mode and click on our instanced pair of pliers. We're going to right click on the modifier and press make unique. And then we're going to attach it to this as well. Because you can't attach instance meshes. So, um, with that in, that in place, uh, we need to just set the center for our tool so it's easier to, uh, to manipulate inside ZBrush. So to do that, we just need to go to the hierarchy panel, click on adjust pivot only, and then press center to object. And that's going to allow us to see where the center of the object is, funnily enough. So now we can see that we've got a single mesh. It's got multiple parts, but we have a single mesh and it should be fairly easy to manage inside a ZBrush. So to get it into ZBrush, what we're going to do is just go up to File, we're going to go to um, sorry the, the Max logo now, it's not File anymore. We're going to go to Export and press Export Selected. So I'm going to go to my Documents, head to my Projects folder, and find da -da -da. Forge Master. There we go. From the drop down panel, make sure you click on the Save as Type and choose OBJ. And we're just going to type uh, pliers. Press Save. You don't need to export the materials and things, but we might as well anyway. Just go ahead and press Export and press Done. I'm going to go back to ZBrush. And from here, we're just going to go to Subtool going to press append and we're just going to grab a sphere 3D then going to go down to select the sphere 3D and then we're going to go to import and choose the pliers and press open and that's going to replace that's a big pair of pliers that's going to replace the sphere with our model so from here uh, we can go ahead and move it Looks like we really need to scale it more than anything, so we're just going to go to the deformation panel, drag down the size until we think that it's you know a decent size. Let's turn on transparency so I can see it. So that's a little bit too small, I think. Let's just make them a bit bigger. So it looks like he can actually hold them in his big hands. Turn off transparency and yeah, that, that looks a fairly decent size. And we can rotate them around using the rotate transpose tools. And then we can move them and sort of position them on the front. Rotate them around a bit until they're in the correct position. Now we're going to get a lot of clipping. However, we're going to be fixing that by putting some wrinkles on the 
on the pouch, making it bulge out. So add the believability to it. So just kind of placing it on the front, around about here. Set it at a bit of an angle, it's not going to be completely straight inside there. And then from here we can click on the draw mode, alt click on the pouch to select it, grab the move brush and then we can start sort of pulling this out. I'm going to turn off symmetry first of all, because it's not relevant here. So we can start pulling this pouch out to make it look like it's uh, holding these pliers. You can drop down a subdivision level as well if you'd like, just so we don't get too many wobbles and bumps in there. Don't worry about pulling it off the surface, we're actually, we can stretch the entire thing down to make it bigger if we need to. And reposition it on the surface of the apron. Doesn't have to be too exact, but while we're doing this, we might as well. Let's move it down a bit just to remove some of the lumpiness. Get a bigger move brush. Just grab it from the center. A little bit further down. Drag the polys down a little bit to give the impression of weight. There we have it, we have some pliers stuck in his uh, in his pouch, his tool pouch. So it's pretty easy to do. And we can create the impression that there's actually more there without having to create any new geometry by just selecting the pliers, duplicating them. We can then select the rotate tool, flip them around, and let's just rotate that a little bit more from the center. And scale them down a bit as well. Just going to get a bit of variation, make it look like it's a slightly different tool. And we can pop these in the pouch as well, right next to them. And we can alt click on the pouch, just add a bit of a hint of some deformation there, make it look like there's something else in there as well. Make a few modifications to the pouch as we go. Doesn't have to be completely perfect and even. Draw is meant to have years of use, so it's going to be a bit warped and stretched. And there we go. So, next thing we're going to do is create sort of a little hammer, which will uh, also go in there too. Obviously, it's going to have his big hammer, you know, which you know, for a game character that's probably going to be his primary weapon. So we're going to go do something special for his hammer. But as a little craft hammer for his uh, for his tiny little projects and things like that, I'm just going to go back to Max, hit the file and reset, and press Don't Save and select Yes to reset. So we're going to create a hammer now. It's going to once again choose a box. It's going to drag this in, drag it up. Select the move move tool and drop a few zeros in there to center it. Now, it's not going to be a very big hammer, but um, yeah, it's it's still going to be pretty interesting to have in there. If you go to the modify panel, you can put a few uh, manual entries in there. So we have it ten wide, uh, ten wide, ten length, and then probably about forty height. And then we can right click on the box and press editable, oops, not editable patch. We want editable poly. 
We can then select the vertexes, drag them up to our desired height. Something like that would be fine, I reckon. It's only going to be a smallish hammer. Then uh, we're going to add a few extra edge loops in here because if we wanted to subdivide this, it's just going to collapse into a mess because it doesn't have enough uh, loops to really hold any detail. So I've selected the edge tool, uh, the edge selection mode, and dragged a box around all of the edges which go around the circumference of what's going to be the haft of the hammer. We're then going to go down to the connect settings, click on that, and we're going to put in the number of segments. Now, you've heard me mention a few times before in ZBrush that it works best with evenly spaced quads. So, just going to drag this up. I think falls right on here. So, we've got some even, even quads on there. Maybe even a bit higher, perhaps. Yeah, four will do fine. Press OK, and we've got some well spaced polygons there. We're then going to add the head of the hammer, and we're going to do that with a separate box. So go back to the Create panel, click on Box, go to Auto Grid and check it. And we're just going to draw that onto the side of our current, our current box there. Drag that off into the background. We're going to go to the Modify, right click and press Editable Poly. Once again, we're just actually going to select shaded and edged faces so we can see what we're doing. And we're just going to get sort of a bit of a, almost like a mallet or something in here. Overall, I think it's a little bit too, too big at the top. So I'm just going to grab the scale tool. Do that by pressing um, R on the keyboard. And just going to play with the shape of that a little bit. That'll do. Once again, going to grab the edge selection mode, drag a selection around the circumference, go to connect, and just add another center in there, just the one section, so they're fairly even. Going to go to the polygon select mode or the face select mode, select the back face, and we're going to hit bevel. Bevel will extrude and also scale it towards an end. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. You can control it with the sliders there. And I'm just going to do a similar thing on the other side. Only I'm going to put it into the positive, so it looks like we've got a larger, flatter end to it. Press OK there. I think we possibly need bit of a longer handle. So just going to select the handle. You click on Editable Poly to deselect any of the selection modes we have. And click on our original mesh of the handle. Select Polygon. Grab the one at the top. Just press Extrude. Press OK on there. We'll move the hammer up. The hammer head up. And that's better. Looks like a smaller hammer. They might use for some so the smaller details and things like that, a bit on the lighter side. I think we also need to sort of taper it a little bit towards the back. So I'm going to select the vertex mode. Select the vertices, vertices on the back with the scale mode selected. I'm just going to draw this in on the side there, just using the X, the Y constraint. There we go. So that's going to do us as a hammer. I just want to make sure that this is actually centered. So I'm going to select, click on Editable Poly. And it looks like our Y axis is just off. So I'm just going to select the Y axis and type in zero at the bottom of the screen. And then we're just going to click on Attach and click on the handle. And now it all becomes one mesh. So two separate parts, but in the same mesh. And now we're going to go to the hierarchy panel, click on effect pivot only, and then press center to object. And I click again on effect pivot only, go to file, export, export selected, and I'm just going to type in hammer. Save it as an OBG, 
press done. Go back to ZBrush. Gonna press append, choose another sphere. We're going to select the sphere, go on to import and choose the hammer and press open. So again, we've got quite a big hammer. So I'm just gonna go down to deformation and shrink down the size, turn on transparency so I can see where it's going. So that's a decent size, maybe. We'll see how it looks in place. So I'm just gonna grab that with the move transpose move brushes, uh, move tools. And drag a line out onto it, grab the dot in the center and move it around. So like we need to rotate it, so select rotate. Drag, grab the dot in the center to sort of make it fit sort of the uh, the rotation of his body. You can then click on move again, drag it a bit further in. Doesn't seem to be clipping through too much. It looks like we might need to rotate that out there. And you're going to tip it over to the side a bit so it looks like it's not set perfectly. Drag that in. So again, click on draw, turn off transparency, and alt click on the pouch. Using the move brush, we're just going to move the pouch out. So use the standard brush to kind of bring the surface up a little bit more, add a bit more of an indentation. Just move it back a little bit, finish it off with the move brush. Turn off transparency. There we go, so we've got a little tool set in his, uh, in his patch at the front. But say we want to um, sort of subdivide these a little bit just to give them a bit more of a, uh, a natural look to them. Then all we need to do, if we go on to solo, uh, select the pliers and go on to solo mode, what we can do here is you'll notice that if we subdivide it, it's actually going to work quite well. <laughs> I didn't expect that. So there's only a few things we really need to do. It's going to undo it. Though, notice that it does go quite soft in some of the places. Not quite the effect that we're going for. Um, it's not too bad though. A few things we want to control the edges for. If we turn on polyframes, we'll see that everything is all part of the same polygroup. So what we're actually going to do is go on to our polygroups. And we're going to start assigning some polygroups to the bits and pieces. So best way to do this is do auto groups and uh, because we've got oh, it looks like we've somehow got two two cylinders in there that's interesting let's just see what's going on so yeah it looks like we've got two cylinders going on in there that's okay, we can fix that really easily. If we go to Subtool, and um, if we just drag the pliers all the way to the bottom so we know what we're dealing with, if we go on to Split and press Split to Parts and press OK, this is going to take it apart bit by bit because there's no c continuation of the mesh. Any part that's separate will get, um, well, will just get separated. So you can see that we've got the two two stretch spheres that we used to create the um, uh, to create the bolt in the center. So all we need to do now is just press delete, press OK. And from here we can go on to uh, merge, press merge down, press OK, merge down, I'm going to press always OK just to skip it. And we have our tool back in one piece, only without that duplicated uh, cylinder. So what we'll do now is just turn on solo mode, go down to our polygroups, and we're going to press auto group. Set the polyframe, and now we've got three, three groups selected here. I'm just going to take the first group of these pli this ply section, 
by pressing Control Shift and clicking on uh, on the poly group, and then going to select this one area down here. I'm actually going to press Group Visible on this, so we've got a, a bit at the bottom. Then the same thing on the other side. Press Group Visible. So drag, pressing Control Shift and dragging a box around the edge we want. Then I'm going to once again just solo this bit just by control shift and clicking on it. I'm going to hold down control shift and grab the lasso tool. And I'm going to see if I can separate off a few of the polygons here just by dragging a selection box around them. Looks I've got looks like I've got the yep, the complete top section, which is really good. So all I need to do now is just separate off the parts I don't want just by holding down Control shift and Alt, dragging a box around the bits I don't need. And do the same around this little section here. Oops, don't want to invert it. And then I'm going to press Group Visible and unhide the selection. Then I'm going to do the same with the underside. Just going to Control Shift and click on this. Drag a box around the bottom. So that's pretty clean, so I'm going to do group visible. And now I'm going to do the same with this upper section. Just control shift and choose this bit. Drag a selection box around these areas. Looks like I got a, didn't get a bit that I wanted. So I'm just going to try that again. Nope, that didn't really go well. Control Shift and click on the bit that I uh, that I need. And drag a selection box and hold down Alt. And hopefully remove that from the selection. And we're left with something a little bit easier to cope with. Gonna hold down Control Shift and Alt and click on the other poly group. Poly groups that I don't need. And then I'm gonna auto group this one by pressing group visible. So that's gonna give me the player head. And up here, if we just select the player head on its own again, hold down control and shift, drag the lasso over the bottom section. That's what we've got, that's what we needed. Press group visible. Again, do the same thing for the top. And the reason for doing this will become clear in a moment. It's going to be very easy to crease things and make sure we keep some nice hard edges on stuff. And then we're just going to do the same thing with the other side. We're going to select the head of the pliers here. Just going to do a subtractive hide on there, invert it by shift clicking, control shift clicking and dragging on the background. And I'm going to hold down control shift and alt and click on all these other poly groups that we don't actually want. And then I'm going to do the same thing on here, just select the top section, press group visible, control shift, click on this poly group, and the same with this bottom section, didn't get everything I wanted. So I'm going to do control shift and alt, drag a box around this bottom, and these polygons here going to do group visible there to make sure I can select it easier. And then I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Get this part. There we go. Group visible. Make everything visible again. In fact, I'm going to hit it another couple of times until I get a different color just to make it easier. So I can tell it's done. And do the same again. And I think that's pretty much what we wanted. Except for maybe the tips here. So if we control shift and click on this main section, um, we want to make this endpoint a different poly group. Do the same with this side. 
hide the bits we don't want. Press group visible. And now, I'm just going to give this a try. I think we might need to do the same on these parts. So just select these bits at the end. Group visible. Bits on the end. Group visible. Now we're going to go on to geometry. And we're going to do crease and then crease by polygroup. And this is going to crease the edges depending on the polygroup, uh, where one polygroup meets another one. And then we're going to see it, what it looks like when we subdivide it. So it looks like something went a bit wrong. But the, heads, the head of the pliers actually looks really nice. I like that. So that's all good. We're going to leave leave the head as it is, but we need to fix the creasing on this section. So it looks like I forgot to separate the different parts out. So we're going to do control, uh, just undo the divisions. Do control shift and click on this polygroup, and then going to drag a section box around this edge here, just to give us the inside of the grip, and press polygroups group visible. Same thing on the other side. Okay, that's misbehaving. Not sure why. There we go. Again, drag a selection about the polys that we want. Make sure we haven't got any others selected. Group visible. We'll go back up to geometry, press crease polygroups, and then we'll divide it. And we get some really nice curves happening, and then we get uh, some hard edges along here which works pretty well, I think. Quite like that. Looks like a pair of usable pliers. And turn off solo mode, turn off polyframe, see what it looks like in there. And that looks like a pretty decent pair of pliers to me. So nice and smooth. And we're not gonna do the same thing with these bits as we can barely see them. So we're just gonna hit divide. So it looks like we've got a different type of tool in there. And we're going to alt and click on the hammer. We're going to go into solo mode. Uh, we're going to press divide just to see what happens. Obviously it turns into what looks like a pair of intersecting cigars. So we want to constrain some of the edges. So the edges that we want to constrain, if we turn on polygroups, we're just going to sorry, poly polyframe, press shift F on the keyboard. We're going to bring up polygroups menu and press auto group. So now we've got two separate parts that we can select really easily. We're going to hide the top part of the haft of the hammer. Just invert it and also hide the bottom part of the hammer. It looks like we can only do one at a time, that's fine. So group visible. Grab the top part, group visible. Grab the end of the hammer itself, again group visible, and the other end of the hammer, group visible. Now let's see what we want to happen here. We're going to go onto geometry, press crease by polygroup, divide it a few times. You know, something that looks fairly hammer like now. Looks like we need to constrain the shapes a little bit more on this one. So I'd like to keep the hammer pretty much the, sh the same head. I'd like the haft to be rounded anyway, so that's fine. So for the head, the hammer head, we're just going to control shift and click on this polygroup. Then we're just going to select around this face, press uh, polygroups and group visible. Do the same on the other side, control shift, click on the polygroup. Control shift drag your selection around the edges that you want. Press group visible. We're then going to go to geometry and crease PG for polygroup. Now we're going to divide it. So we get a nice smooth flow back here. We also get um, a nice flat end, end on the hammer there. Turn off polygroup. Uh, polyframe. So we need to rotate it a bit more, I think, so it's not clipping through his stomach. And 
hand, so it looks like it's resting the front of the pouch. Cool. So there we have it, guys. A few accessories, easily created in uh, in Max, and then easily edited in ZBrush. We can then add some sculpted details and things to them. If we go to the hammer, for instance, we can turn on Trim Dynamic, the tr Trim Dynamic brush, and we can wear down the edges of this hammer. to make it look a little bit more aged. We'll be putting more detail into them later when we go into the detailing stage. But if you want to add a few bits and pieces in as you go, just as an indication as to what it is you want to do when you get onto the, the detail stage, then at least you know where you can start doing things. So the Trim Dynamic brush will flatten down edges on corners. So I'm just tapping it onto the edge, dragging it a tiny little bit, kind of add a little bit of smoothing to it. Do the same with the head of the hammer, but not too much. Okay, it's not massively important right now, so that's all good. I can get my viewport to obey me. There we go. Okay, so I mean, you can do a similar thing with the pliers as well if you wanted to. Just kind of add a bit of a edge, flattened edge to them, make them look a little bit more worn and used. As I say, we'll be coming back to this shortly uh, when we do a detail pass on things. Don't know what kind of um, capacity that these will show up in the final mesh. Might just be textured on, might be some really basic geometry. Um, it definitely won't be a, you know, a very fully working set of pliers. Like they could possibly work right now. They've got the uh, the pivot point in the centre. And we definitely won't have the rest of the pliers down here. It'll literally just be a mesh, of this part of the mesh which will be visible up there. So we'll see how that goes anyway. And if none of that made any sense to you, don't worry, it will a bit later on. Alright, so. We've got some accessories there. It's looking a lot more tooled up. I'd like to add uh, a belt buckle, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to hide the hide all the things at the front. In fact, I'm going to move these pliers and hammers and things up to where we've got his his pouch. I'm just going to rename that to the pouch. So we've got the original apron here, which we now no longer need. So we can delete that. Actually, we're going to keep that because we might need to use an insert mesh brush on it later on. So I'm going to rena rename this to uh, Apron uh, Original. And I'm going to move that all the way to the bottom of the list here, along with the original body. Move the pliers up to go with the pouch. And the hammer. There we go, so we've got some tools there. So, let's get this belt buckle on. Let's turn off these pliers and things. We're going to turn off the pouch. And let's just see what we've got. We've got the upper body. Might as well turn his beard and things on. Don't need his gloves on for now, or the wrist straps. And we're going to turn the belt and the trousers on. There we go. So I wanted to do a sort of like a wolf's head buckle. So I'm going to show you a pretty cool way of being able to do that. If we go into our tools menu and go to a, a cylinder, cylinder 3D. I'm just going to get this set up for some surface sculpting. If we turn on the poly frame, we see that we've got a pole in the center, which really sucks to do anything on. So let's do a quick save. If we come down to this initialize menu we'll be able to customize the way that this actually looks. So on the, the Z size we're going to drag that down to give more of a flattened look. We've got a lot of edge loops around this section so we're actually going to turn the H div oh, sorry not H divide, V divide. We're going to turn that down so we've got just one in the center. 
Then we're going to uh, make it a poly mesh 3D. And from here, we're then just going to add some edge loops in. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift. I'm going to select my select rectangle from the brush menu. I'm going to make this bit visible. Uh, and then go to Poly Groups, uh, Group Visible. Then I'm going to do the same to the other side. Group Visible. And then going to select this. Uh, face, so control shift and click on it. Go into geometry. I'm going to see if we can get some edge loops in here using group loops. I'm going to press group loops. Uh, not quite what I was after. I'm just going to select edge loop and edge loop again. Edge loop again. Nope, too much. Hit it once. I'm going to select this, uh, this edge loop here by hiding the others and press edge loop in there. I'm going to select the center and the outside by the looks of things. I'm just going to deselect this as I don't need it. And I'm going to press edge loop. And that's going to give me a fair few edge loops on the side to deal with. I'm then going to select this section, the center, the central part of it. I'm then going to go into crease and press crease. And I'll add a crease around the part which we had visible only. So when we divide it, we'll keep a nice sharp edge on the cylinder. And we start to get a hole in the center. Oh, I hate cylinders in Max, uh, in ZBrush. So what I intend to do now is just do it in Max instead. So I'm just going to hop back into Max. Going to delete our hammer. Find my mouse, there we go. I'm just going to drag in a cylinder onto the grid and drag it up to give me some height. Now I've got a bit more control over this than we do in that in ZBrush. It's going to reduce the height segments and increase the number of sides. So now we have um, pretty decent if we just put that up to. Uh, 64. You can see that we've got some pretty decent distribution of polys there. We can then go to cap segments and do all that stuff that I was trying to do in ZBrush inside of Max and it does it a whole lot better. So add enough to get a little bit of a surface going. So we've got some evenly distributed polygons for the most part. We'll then uh, go to the Modify panel, go to um, right-click on Cylinder and press Editable Poly. Go to File, Export, Export Selected. We'll then just do uh, Buckle. Press Export and press Done. And then going to jump back into ZBrush. Going to go to import and choose the buckle, press OK. That's going to replace our original cylinder with the one that we've got here. Bring up the polyframe, everything's nicely spaced so that we can start using it. Just going to crease the edges on this, so hold down Control Shift and drag a selection box through the center. Go to geometry and press crease. And we can now divide it, get a decent amount of resolution and we're going to keep a sharp edge on it. So, really cool thing that I like to do on here is use some um, radial symmetry. So we can do that by going on to transform, clicking on R, and turn the radial count up. And you'll see that we've got lots of red points here now. Seems like I've got things a little bit off center. So I'm just going to go on to transform, and I'm going to put set pivot, and set pivot again. I'm going to do see if that's central now. So it looks like the symmetry is now behaving for us. Yep, that's fine. 
We need to change the plane at which the symmetry is working on. So let's just try Z. Oh, looks like we need Y. So now that's going to give us some extra points to sculpt with in this area. So just as a demonstration as to what uh, radial symmetry does, we can do things like this. Create some really nice intricate details. And it's amazing what you can do with this. You can create a whole load of, uh, of different patterns just using different radial counts and different brushes. And you can create some really interesting shapes. But that's not what we want to use it for. I do want to use radial symmetry just to kind of add a pattern around the outside of the belt buckle. Possibly into the center. So it can have it quite... Uh, it works with masking as well. So if you wanted to, you can drag a mask around the outside. We can then turn off radial symmetry, uh, just symmetry in general, and remove the mask up to this poly face. We can then invert the mask, head to deformation, and inflate. Get rid of the mask, and we can see we've got a fairly nice surface to that there. To work as a belt buckle. And here I want to uh, sort of do a wolf's head. So I'm going to see if I can use a photograph to do this. Although to be honest, after looking at the at a few references for Fenrir, the uh, the wolf of Norse legends, I found this interesting reference image of an amulet, which could be pretty cool as a belt buckle. So I'm just going to sculpt something quite simple. Like I say, this isn't the detailing stage in the moment. I'm just going to stick my reference image on my other screen so I can keep an eye on it. And it's going to roughly use the clay build brush. In fact, I'm just going to mask off this entire area as well. So I'm just going to hold down the mask. In fact, it's going to undo that for now. I'm going to go to transform, activate symmetry, and turn on radial symmetry. Hold down control and mask off this interior section. Then I'm going to invert the mask so that I can work within the bounds of this. I'm going to turn off symmetry, well, turn off radial symmetry and make sure I've still got it on the x axis so I can sculpt both sides. And I'm just going to sculpt in a rough kind of indication of what it's going to be. I can come in and detail this up later on in the detailing stage. So, like I say, very roughly. Might even set a couple of jewels in for the eyes or something like that. And we're just basically sculpting in a relief more than anything. the eyes up a little bit higher make sure I get the snout in it's pretty fun sculpting reliefs um, you don't have to be massively exact with them and it's all about building up layers so I'm just going to put in a few extra little indications of what to do later on Grab the Damien Standard Brush. Just going to use to cut in a little bit of an indication as to where the fangs and jawline is. Which looks a little bit retarded there, so just going to adjust this, make the snouts a little bit higher so I can get more of the more of the profile in.
So if any of you guys ever played The Witcher, then you may have noticed that uh, Geralt has a wolf, uh, a wolf amulet, which looks really cool. I'd love to use that, but yeah, it's kind of been done. <laughs> so I'm just kind of doing something a bit simpler, um, but still keeping in with the sort of Norse mythology, uh, keeping in well with the the sort of Fenrir as a as a mythological North Norse god, Norse character. So that's enough for now, just to keep it sort of in there. Give me some sort of indication of what I'll be doing later on. Just want to bring these eyes out a bit actually, I think I'll put them in a bit too deep. I'm just gonna smooth out. So put some indication in here. That there are eyes. And then put the brow over the top. Sculpting reliefs isn't something which I do a lot of, it's fun, but I need a bit more practice at them, as you can probably tell. But this isn't going to be showing up as a major detail in the character anyway. It's just going to be a little bit of uh, fun detail if people look close enough. That's great for now. Let's go ahead and get this in with the rest of the uh, bits and pieces. Um, I'm actually going to keep that mask active and then I'm going to go to uh, polygroups and I'm going to do group masked and that's going to separate off the polygroups so I can easily mask it later on if I need to. I'm going to go back to my original sculpt, go back to my belt I'm going to go to Subtools, down the bottom, and Append. And I'm going to take this buckle that we have here. Doesn't know that worked entirely. Go back to the belt, Append, select that. There we go. I'm going to reduce the size of it. So I'm going to go to Deformation. Take the size down. Now it looks like we have got it in there. Not sure what happened with that, but oh well, there we go. Let's just delete the duplicate. Go back to deformation. Drag the size down. Maybe a bit more. I'm going to go to rotate and turn on transparency. And just going to rotate it around using this. Going to turn on the Y axis. No, X axis perhaps. There we go. Let's turn this the right way around. Use the move, the transpose move move tool. Just to bring this in. Looks like we need to rotate it again. Let's turn off symmetry. And let's just rotate that around. into place over the gap in the belt. And get that put in there. Alrighty. Let's turn off polyframe. That's looking like it'll be a cool little detail. So normally I wouldn't bother, but if there's a chance of where we'll be showing this guy without his uh, his apron on, which there might well be a chance these days characters go through a lot of outfit changes in games most because the ability to do it is now there yeah, I think that sits quite nicely let's turn the apron back on, I'm going to move this up so it's in line with ah, I just messed up the order of everything by pressing the wrong button Okay, no problem, let's find out where everything is. Uh, we've got the upper body at the top, got the apron, got the trousers, got the boots, and the gloves go under the upper body. 
We've got the pliers which can go under the apron. Boots can go under the trousers. Beard can go under the upper body and between the gloves. Bootstraps can go up underneath the boots. Bootstraps too, again underneath the boots. The belt buckle can go under the trousers. The pliers can go under the apron. Eyes can go up by the upper body. We've got the wrist strips, wrist straps rather, which can go underneath the gloves. And we've got the belt, which can go between the belt buckle and the trousers. And we've got the glove charms, which can go unsurprisingly underneath the wrist straps. Hammer. There's my apron. There's my apron. And I've done it again. Yeah, who cares? I'll just do that. I won't watch and make you watch this. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, sometimes it can be a bit tricky when using a display as a display tablet. Sometimes the calibration gets a little bit off towards the edges of the screen. You end up pressing things you don't want to press. So uh, I've just reordered everything into something which makes sense. So I can easily find everything that I need. So I'm going to turn the apron back on. And I'm just going to adjust the apron at a lower subdivision level. If I actually selected the apron in the first place. At a lower subdivision level. So I can bring it out over the top of this belt buckle and it'll follow further line a whole lot better. So there we go. Alrighty, so if we just jump that back up, make sure we don't have anything sticking out. It's all fine. And let's take a look at what we've got so far. So let's turn on all of the relevant subtools. So we just got to adjust the pouch to uh, take into account the adjustments we made with the actual apron itself. Let's bring that up to the surface. Cool, so there we are. And with the, uh, the pouch at the front, we'll just add a few little indications of stretch marks and things. So it's kind of pulling in from the corners. So remember to smooth them back and get a nice transition. Yeah, just a few details in there. We'll do more in our detail pass. But uh, I think for now what we're going to do is add a few more accessories in the next chapter. 
So let's see what this dude looks like when we don't just have random bits highlighted. Let's see if we can find a better material for him. Obviously not that one. I think that's all right. <laughs> Let's just do a quick BPR render pass on there. And uh, there we go. So things are starting to come together quite well. The forms are flowing. Uh, it needs to do a bit more work on the on the pouch, of course. We'll do that in the detailing phase as it's a little bit too lumpy. So, yeah. In the next chapter, guys, going to do a little bit more sort of uh, accessorizing. Going to add a few more little details like buttons and things like that. And then we're going to move on to the detailing pass, where we'll start putting skin details in, wrinkles and stuff like that. And then carry on through onto every other part of the, the mesh and carry on with that sort of idea. So join me in the next chapter, guys. You have yourselves a good day and happy sculpting.